Good morning and welcome to the latest in the Flexible Space Association series of Workspace Wisdom webinars. I'm Jane Sartin, the Executive Director of the Flexible Space Association. And today we are joined by photographer Marek Sakura, who is going to cover the topic of how to take great pictures of flexible workspace, um, which is, is definitely a really important topic, I think, for, for the industry. We all think a lot about presenting our houses when we put them on the market, but perhaps perhaps not so much offices. So I hope this is going to be a great opportunity for everyone to get some, some tips on, on that, whether you're using a professional photographer or whether you're needing to take a few pictures yourself. So um, I'm going to hand over to, to Marek, who has um, a present presentation to run through. Um, and then as we go through, if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat box. Um, and we'll probably pick them up when Marek has, has finished. And I will I will ask the, ask the questions. We've also got a few that were submitted by people as they were registering for the, for the webinar. So I'm just going to find um, Marek's presentation. And hand over to you Marek. Hello guys thank you very much Jane. Uh, it's great to be here my name is Marek Sikora I'm an interior photographer with over 10 years of experience in the creative industry. Um, so now as the great resignation from the office space continues and the user experience has taken a center stage more companies embrace hybrid working models we must ask what is photography meant to bring to the table. So more focused, more intentional um, photography as a visual language of the design industry. A successful office shoot requires more than just a man with a, cam a camera. In fact, it's important that creative teams join uh, the conversation and take a holistic approach to achieve consistent results by introducing standards uh, required to set the scene and policies on how to photograph each space for the best look, uh, clear and intentional focus. Do we photograph to showcase the space design solution or is it an office furniture case study? Do we focus on architectural design elements or individual elements of design and their context? context? Uh, a new way of working with photographers is possible only if leaders, uh, managers or marketing people take charge of their own change journey. Uh, when managers spend time aligning their vision with the photographer's skills at creating an idea around the style, it is more likely to come together better and faster. As a photographer, I created golden rules uh, for taking best photography and uh, standards. Uh, it's a base to create a new level of visual representation for my clients in the form of even more precise style oriented uh, office photography. So what steps could be taken to bolster a positive impact on the outcome of the shoot? Make sure your photographer or yourself are equipped with um, right camera and lenses. A truly great photography comes with outstanding, outstanding quality and that allows to represent true proportion of the scene, clarity across the frame and offers complete compositional freedom. Uh, deliver transparent messaging on ideas and set a visual tone ahead of the shoot. This can be done via uh, an inspiration board in the form of a chat with the photographer, some of my clients send me briefs uh, with CGI's and floor plans for reference. They they create mood boards on Pinterest and and we get to talk about what they want exactly. And um, they give me regular feedback after the shoots as well, how to improve and, and what to do. So we building the style from shoot to shoot. It's important to understand that each specific image requires a specific composition, camera settings and lens to achieve that effect. Um, I have a full spectrum of lenses um, available. However, many limitations I see across the industry happen to be uh, due to the ex equipment limitations or lack, uh, lack of expertise from the photographer. Uh, the next step is staying consistent. Stick to it. Okay, the next slide. Uh, so how to take pictures of flexible spaces? 
make sure you decide up front uh, on the main focus areas of the shoot. The majority of my clients use on average 20 images per shoot for their marketing. Um, be open to discussing your ideas. Quite often what looks good on your iPhone camera uh, doesn't translate well into large format. Make time uh, to set the scene for the shoot, read the room. Um, my commercial interior photography guidelines will help you with that. If you decide to hire a photographer for the shoot, or myself, for example, all my photographers are trained to present consistent quality on each shoot. Uh, provide real-time feedback, increase the feedback between the shoots. When we know better, we do better. Um, what role does photography play in the commercial build and design industry? Uh, th th this is a tricky one. As, as a commercial build, build and design companies uh, together, just a second, um, reinvent buildings and transform workplaces for the corporate sector. Photography is the visual language. Um, because how do you sell a product that doesn't yet exist? You have to use visuals. So very often, the customer's experience starts with looking at the images before the actual space can be experienced. So it's down to creative teams to find the right language for your company, which then can be translated into the visual impact through imagery, maybe photography or, or videos. Um, my team works really hard to learn our client styles. We always make sure uh, we are on the same page by reading their brochures, keeping up with their social media posts and talking to them. So over the 10 years of being an office interior photographer, I came across three kinds of attitudes towards the service and products that I am delivering. Um, so the first attitude is booked and briefed via email to shoot and drop the final product. Really easy. Uh, they, they give me address, go and shoot. Uh, then the second one is when managers are coming to the shoots, telling me what images they require. They create an individual style profiles for the client and images. Uh, most of my bookings fell under the first two. I knew that I, to be able to present a consistent product to my clients, I needed to create some sort of a standards that would help me to produce a streamlined service every time. This is why I created commercial interior photography guidelines. Uh, so this is this is the book that that I created just to be able to present consistent quality and consistency across all of the shoots. And moreover, I can teach my photographers to recreate my style. And if I break leg, the, the, the shoot can still go on because the photographer that I trained can create very similar style of the photography. So I call it the golden rules to successful office interior shoot. Uh, this book is, is um, I've got a copy down here, sorry. It's a pocket size book. Uh, it has two sections. Uh, first section is uh, talking about staging. And it says how we do everything to make the space presentable. Uh, how we align tables, chairs, how we tuck in cables and uh, all over the other stuff. I'm going to go through it quickly with you uh, just to let you see how it looks like. Uh, so the first thing when we get to the space we notice is cables, right? The, the, uh, we use sticky tape, we tuck them in, we disconnect and hide cables. We put them away and then we plug everything in. Sometimes there's uh, IT people running over. Hey, what happened? This polycom has been disconnected. And, and we're like, OK, sorry, we had to disconnect it for the photo and then we will put it back on again. Um, we clean desk and table surfaces. We align monitors. Um, we align task chairs. So 
each task chair has a lot of settings. As you can see, uh, you can you can have armrest higher or lower. You can have backrest, uh, overall height adjustment, and then the caster wheels. So we spend a lot of time to making sure all of the chairs are at the same level and and look exactly the same with the tilt with the height and sometimes i wish there was a, a reset button that brings it all to um default setting but there's not the, the worst are herman miller's to be honest i, I don't know if you're familiar with that uh, uh chairs so we also um go quite uh, deep into the detail we align caster wheels on each of our photos you will find the star base and the caster wheels are all aligned we hide uh, fire extinguishers from the from the frame uh, sometimes it's impossible sometimes you have these fire buttons on the walls or uh, labels that you you cannot remove but um, uh, the fire extinguisher are, are usually red and when when they are standing next to white wall they produce red cast I, you you will notice that from now on um, so it's better to take them out and remove whatsoever so much easier uh, reflections when we take photographs we make sure we're not um, in the photo ourselves so you can you can sometimes photograph a partition and then you see yourself in the shot, uh, which isn't really flattering because um, you didn't think about modeling or posing at all. So some reflections are impossible to get rid of. So you have to Photoshop. You, you can't address this on the on the shoot. Uh, we align drawer pedestals fabrics and cushions so the, the the most tricky fabrics are velvets where you have prints if someone sat on it it's already messed up so we try to kind of stroke it and make it all look uniform we plump all of the pillows and uh, leather is tricky as well because sometimes you have um, a greasy greasy stains on the on the leather so that needs to be addressed as well on the shirt uh, electrical sockets. This is this is again a, a, a deep level. We 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 make sure all of the switches are off, so they are uniform across the frames. You can you, it's a, it's a tiny detail, but I think it's important to uh, to show that uh, the lighting. It's very good if all of the lights are on across the frame. So even if you look uh, into the furthest room, it should be lit sometimes in the offices you have um a motion sensors so you have to virtually visit every single meeting room uh, to trigger the light on you come back to your camera you take the photo and then they off again because they like two three minutes uh and uh, that's it if there's no movement uh, we tend to remove all of the keys from the units, the storage units, um, only when it's like hundreds of them, as you see on the uh, little uh, lockers, it's it's impossible to remove them. But we take them out, we put them inside of the unit, and then we replace it back into the lock. Uh, we align the blinds as well. Um, it's it's always best if the the blinds are up all the way up so you can see the views sometimes when you have very strong sunlight uh, coming into the shot it, to the interiors it's difficult to photograph so we have to balance that and then we use blinds to to kind of help out but normally the the blinds look best when they are up uh the background so if you look at the at the far end of the photo all of the stages that i've talked about before has to be implemented even in the furthest room so you can see green circles there um, that the background has been tidied up the, the caster wheels are, are aligned and and the chairs are all in line except for the one photo where the where the red circle is the 
the background hasn't been looked after and, and it doesn't look good. So, and then after you've got your photos, it's good to edit. Uh, editing is difficult. Sometimes you can send it over to external company and they will deal with it for say one pound per photo. So it's really cheap to get editors from China. You upload your photos and they do it for you as well. Uh, but what's important for me is if you take photos from, from one room and you take like five or six photos from that room, they might look different after you come back home and look at them on the computer. So when you're editing, it's important to, to bring that uh, differences to, to even level so they, the photos from one, one room look exactly the same. Uh, so what is the difference between edited and unedited photograph? So this one's unedited. This is straight for the cam from the camera. And as you can see, we can, we can point out some problems already with the photo. The white isn't white. It comes out kind of creamy or yellowish cast, which isn't good. Um, there's some barrel distortion on, if you can see a partition glass on the right hand side, you can see that it, it curves a little bit. This, this happens when you use a wide angle lens and um, that's easy corrected in the post processing. So no worries about that. Um, so edited photograph then looks like this. So I'm just going to flick through uh, back and forth, see unedited and then edited. So we corrected here is the curvature of the barrel distortion or in the lens. We corrected white balance. Photo is uh, much brighter and more contrasty, punchy and, and uh, saturation is better. Um, and then we ident identify the problems. So as you see in this photo, we have uh, a few circles that need to be taken in retouching pro pro process. Um, all of the sockets uh, that that's unwanted, fire exits, smoke detectors, the units on the ceiling, we don't like to show that in the photo. There's reflection of the fire exit in the partition glass as well. Um, so I'm going to flick to the retouched photo. And that's how it looks when it's retouched. So I think this is this is the, the, the best option uh, to present the quality of the product that you are trying to present to your clients. All right. Thank you. And uh, we've we've got any questions? Thank you very much, Marek. I think I think what I particularly took from that is that attention to detail is really really important, and that you spend time spend time doing things like aligning wheels of chairs and things. Is that is yes. that what you spend a lot of the time doing? Before we press the button, basically we spend a lot of time to make sure the scene looks good, and. You know, photography is creative process, and that allow that that involves a lot of thinking. So, be before we take a, a photo, we we take a walk about. We we look for the angles. We look for uh, what we go into photograph. And once I have this camera set on the tripod, I will um, look through the viewfinder, and I will identify the problems, and then I will I will address them before I take the photo. Um, so think what you want to show in the photo, um, take the shot, look at the screen and, 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 and then you can see what you need to address. Basically a tripod helps tremendously because you can put your camera on the tripod. The frame is there so you can just work your levels. You can work your tilt. Uh, you can, you can 
work out your frame basically so it's interesting and then go there align the chairs and hide some cables hide fire extinguishers switch the lights on and make sure that looks good yeah so have it having the options so we've we've got um questions that came in before and some um, and questions are now being added and people do do, do keep adding questions the, by far the most popular pre-submitted question and it's just come up again was whether or not um well wh whether or not it's a good idea to have people in the photographs and if you are having people in the photographs whether there are any any tips for um how best to do that um and um i suppose you know things like yeah, if you're using the, the same number of people how best to kind of make them, them different and, and and the question that's just come through about um any poses that they should be doing so do you want to talk a bit about that because it's definitely something everyone's interested in yes um photographing people is always difficult it's more difficult than photographing empty spaces uh, especially when you when the space is occupied already and you have people in that are an employees of the company that you're photographing for. It's different when you bring in your own people, you can direct them and tell them what to do. But with the employees, you, what, what you can do is just politely ask, hey, I'm just about to take a photo. If you don't mind, would you mind being in the photo and maybe sitting up straight and looking your nicest? So the, the, um, the, photographing with people is always more challenging it takes more time and think process as well so you have to uh, the best way to do it is bring your own people to the shoot get a couple of interns or um, somebody that's actually not very busy today and can go with you and 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 sit down and so depending on the space that you want to show posing is difficult when they sitting you have to think about the um why are they sitting there what are they doing are they drinking coffee are they with laptop or are they on the phone or maybe browsing so you have to think about okay we we are in the kitchen maybe someone will make a cup of tea right so don't ask people to just reach and and stay still with that cardboard just make them work it okay can you make yourself a cup of tea and then you just snap as they do in it and then you you take 10 photos and you pick the best one out of it so, so, so it's, it's real 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 life pictures effectively what you're what you're suggesting is that people yes. are doing things in the space they would normally be doing rather than and yes. anything else i guess might look a bit false yeah whenever you try to pose people and ask them to do something and and hold still it's gonna look fake yeah yeah unless they are very good models and you are a very good <laughs> photographer then it, it's possible to do but with real life people when they are everybody's shy for the camera i mean say 90 percent of people they don't know what to do with their hands they don't know how to walk if i if i take a random person and ask them to walk across the room they will walk without moving their hands so they just move legs and and, and i'm like okay just try to move your hands so it's difficult to get that really looking good with people and and I know that um, some some workspace operators do use their their own staff, but there might not be very many people. So it's different. The same people in lots of different images. Do you think that's OK? And you, have you any thoughts on how best to do that? So, uh, it's good to get like a change of clothes as well. Jacket yeah. on, jacket off, um, maybe a handbag and then no handbag and then sit that person that used to walk uh, in the previous photos and just just kind of mix and match them so it doesn't look very obvious um, to, to to the viewers later on oh they use the same people so that that is that is mainly it and when you photograph people as well there's there's angles that a person looks more flattering from basically side is more flattering than front so when they walk in across the frame it's good that they walk from left to right not towards you yeah so you oh, yeah. can get that blurry 
um, kind of figure moving across the frame. So it's good to find a good spot for it. And then, but um, what works best is one, three, one or three people. Right. Two people doesn't look really good in the shot. You have to work really hard to make it right. Okay, that, I think that's really really helpful because, as I say, lot, lots of um, lots of in, interest in the, in that topic. So it must be something that everyone's a bit grappled with at times as to how how to do that or, and whether to put people in. Um, just picking up um, other questions that um, were submitted first in advance, and we've also got some some other ones coming in. Um, when when you're photographing workspace, does the client usually decide the areas to be photographed or do you come in and recommend see with your expertise? Do you have a preference for that or does it vary? So, as I said before, there, there are three kinds of attitude of my clients uh, coming to the shoot. So some of them just give me the address, the time and um, and the package. So they say 20, we want 20 photos, just go there and photograph. So it's my courtesy and my visual um, expertise to, to say, okay, the, the first thing that I do is always, I have a walkabout across uh, the entire space, and then I pick the most interesting spots. Second, second um, kind of attitude is when, when the um, marketing people come in with me and they, they kind of point the fingers Oh, can we have this space? Can we have that space? But how I photograph it is entirely down to me. They do sometimes give me like a, oh, can, can we have a shot like this with a phone? So I'm trying to recreate recreate that, but the ratio is slightly different. That it, it, it doesn't um, work exactly the same yeah. as on the on the phone. Different lens, different compression, and uh, more specific stuff. Yes, all the professional things that you're bringing to it, I'm sure. Um, so another question that's just come in is, what's the best platform for editing photos? Now, I'm I'm guessing you use something quite high tech on this. Have you any suggestions oh. on, on, on so some platforms out there? In the past, I only used uh, Adobe Photoshop. Right. And then they released, good, good, good long time ago, they released Lightroom, which is a Photoshop in appeal, basically sliders. Uh, but it's really good and advanced uh, software for editing photography. So um, I would recommend uh, Adobe Lightroom for this. It's really okay. easy to learn and, and it's really easy to uh, work with. It's, you don't have to use masks. There's no uh, nothing advanced, just sliders on the right hand side. Okay, thank you. Yes, I think I think that probably demonstrates that people have realised from your presentation that editing is definitely important as well as, well as just taking taking the photograph. Editing helps. It, I mean, you can you can get nice photo, but it it's got no soul. Yeah. So once you edit that, you take out the cables, you do this and that. I mean, editing cables is difficult. I I recommend to send it over to external company as well because yeah. sometimes it, it can go wrong. But making the colours pop, making you can you can make um, a little crop adjustment as well, and and so just to make the photo standing up out a little bit more. Okay. I noticed in a lot of your photos that you showed us in the presentation, the word plants in them. Is that would you recommend particularly that people in, try and include plants even if they don't normally have them in the space? Should they bring them in? Or? The, yeah, the 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 plants um, in the office spaces recently is. A, a very increasing trend. There, there's loads of plants and flora in the office. We have moss walls and living walls and stuff like that. So I think this is very good um, punchline to include in the shot. Uh, you you can come close to the plant and shoot through it, so you get that blurry greenish uh, greenery on this side. So and then you can see the rest of the photo. So yeah, by all means. Uh, try to include any color that pops up out in the in the in the space. The plants, um, any furniture that is really interesting as well, or the view, the view across through the window is 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 good point to if you have a central London location and you can see London Eye, for example, through the windows, why not show it? That yes. will that will increase your um, 
kind of value as a company hey we've done this project look Yes, this is what you could see from your office office window yeah. if you come, come and use our space. Um, another another question that came in from from someone registering to to join today. Um, do you have tips to take good pictures of small offices? Um, it can be difficult to fit furniture in without including the door, etc. I don't know whether you also have thoughts on here whether that's a problem including the door. But what what's your thoughts on taking good pictures of small offices? Um, it, you will definitely need a door wedge. So the doors don't close on you as you're taking the photo. Um, I I have a very wide angle lens to make the small place, small space look slightly bigger than it is. Um, the, the, the best way to do it is sometimes you can shoot with the partition wall frame and include the door handle on the other side. So it kind of closes the, the composition in and then you, you got the room inside in the middle. Um, use your um, portrait mode in the camera. Don't shoot landscape. Portrait is easier because when you when you shoot in through narrow doors, uh, portrait option is is better for the for the for the room. And also you can you can just um, concentrate on more editorial feel to the photo. So come closer, show the like a, a back of the chair and then the rest of the room it, it doesn't have to be from far back you can you can you can be in the door line or just a little bit out of there okay thank you yeah, so it's thinking about what that what's in the shot and it doesn't it's not necessarily a problem having the door because the door is there i guess it's just yes it's just yes and, and sometimes we have beautiful doors beautiful yes. door handles <laughs> that that you've designed right yeah. Yeah, so to be there, so yeah. Do you, do you ever use black and white photographs, of, or, or is it generally uh, not? I so I shoot all of the photos I shoot are in color. Mm, yeah, but they are easily converted to black and white in post processing. I, I think there's no point shooting in black and white and then going back home and you thinking, ah, oh, that that could be nice in color but you can't convert back into it. So, and I didn't have a black and white request ever, I think. Right, I yes, think. it's, it's um, perhaps something that was, was happening more a few years ago and people are looking at the brighter, brighter but, colors. Well, again there now. was a trend a few years ago yes. when you had this black and white photo and then red phone booth. Yes. I think we've probably all seen that. That, <laughs> yes. that was a big thing, uh, like six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, another question, and this sort of final moments, if anyone else has any anything they want to ask, I think. Um, if the workspace only has access to a mobile phone to take photos, are there any tips to get the best picture possible on the phone's camera? I mean, it'd be interesting to hear your view on this, but is it also, the reality is it's worth investing in a... In a, in a reasonable separate camera or do you think mobile phones can be used it's it's up entirely up to up to the um, person who creates that photo i mean mobile phones has amazing cameras right now right but to take that photo is easy but then you have to make sure your vertical lines are vertical don't point it up down or skew to the light left or right because it doesn't look professional. If you wanna, if you wanna have professionally look photos, you basically need some sort of sta stabilization. Like you can even have that. The, there's a little tripod uh, for the mo uh, mobile phones. Put it on top of the of the unit and take photo with that. But make sure you set it right and it's leveled. Um, other than that. If if you tidy up the the space, if you think about the framing, if you think about the 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 colors and what you want to show, if you use mobile phone, it's fine. You know, as long as it represents the quality of the design and you're happy with it, I don't see a problem. No, and I guess it comes down to the phone as well, doesn't it? Because some phones do now have amazing cameras, and people are prioritizing that in buying them. But others are still a lower, a lower quality. So that's probably something worth bearing in mind in terms of what mm -hmm. people have access to. Um, 
Okay, another another question just just coming in as we sort of approach the end. Do you have any tips for photographing older buildings which aren't as aren't as modern? So, so when we photograph all the buildings, um, it's important to show the soul of it. Don't try to make modern photography from the older buildings because it's not going to work. So we, I don't know what age is. Anna referring to in here, but I'm thinking grade two listed, for example, where you have low ceilings and dark beams and and um, tiny windows. Yeah, <laughs> okay. that's good. <laughs> so, yeah, just just go with the flow. If it's old, show it. It's got the soul. It's got the 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 feel to it, and. Um, just try to exaggerate that and and make sure you you don't you don't mix and match two styles you can't have bright and colorful photo from woods and uh, and 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 magnolia right <laughs> And I, I guess it's much like people's own homes. For some people, they they like the heritage features and exactly. the older buildings, and other yeah. others like brand new, just built properties. So there'll there'll be somebody, and so I guess that's as well that why it's important to to highlight the features that you've got rather than try to hide them. Um, so I think that's that's we've we've come to. And I think that's been that's been really. I found that really interesting, Marek. Thank you. Thank um, you. As <laughs> some, I, yeah, I'm in, interested in taking photographs myself, and I think it's, it's take, given me some tips on, uh, particularly the detail. I think the thing I've really taken away from that is that attention to detail is really important, and that, and perhaps taking lots of photos so that you have the um, the options afterwards. The the most important thing for me is to the, the photography truly represent the quality of the design that someone produced because. It's injustice. It's great injustice when you have beautiful spaces and not so good photos. But yeah. you can you can make um, um, a mid-level design looking very good with good photography. So, yeah, the opportunity is there for everybody to, and it's yes, definitely worth yes. spending spending some time on. Um, so thank thank you very much, Marek. For anyone that um, wants to have another look at some of the details on that, the, we'll, we'll put the webinar recording onto the YouTube channel um, a bit later today and, um, and, and, make, and make that available to everybody to, to watch again if you want to or, or share it with colleagues. Um, our next um, Workspace Wisdom webinar is on Tuesday the 29th of March when we'll be hearing from John Weber of Flexible Space Association member Colliers on the um, topic of business rates and flexible workspace, making sure you don't overpay, which I think is going to be um, one that a lot of our, our members have a great interest in. Um, and business rates are, are definitely a significant issue in the industry. Um, details of that are on the events section of the Flex uh, web um, website, um, and we'll also share details over, over the coming um, days and weeks um, on other platforms as well. So thank you very much again to Marek. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. And thank you. have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.